Good afternoon, um, media members are present in the virtual conference too. Welcome to the official press conference to the Trinidad and Tobago national team for the opening for the match number 18 in the Gold Cup 2023. Welcome to the Trinidad and Tobago head coach, Egwis Is, and the player, K. Aruba. I don't think this is very good, but let's see it. And we can hand your hand to, the hand to make a question if you want. Thank you. Uh, coach, you know, a big win in the, in the first game. Uh, how's the team kind of you know, been working to set themselves up to replicate that result you know, tomorrow against Jamaica? Um, well, we study the opposition, first of all, which we did. Um, we and Jamaica is no secret as a big rivalry in the Caribbean is a derby game for us. So the intensity and, and, and the preparation has been really, really good. So we're looking forward to the match tomorrow. Coach, that um, the country would like to know, trying to go anyway, the fitness of the players, is everybody fit, is everybody available? Yeah, um, everybody's 100% uh, fit. Uh, we have no injuries at this point in time in the, in the camp. Let me just ask, strategically, knowing what the current Jamaica team represents, would it be, in terms of your strategy, how much of it you can divulge this afternoon? Is it going to be defensive, offensive? What, what are your basic strategies that you can share with us this afternoon? We want to win the game. You know, we came uh, in the tournament with a mindset that we want to go to the second phase of the tournament, which is coming out of the group. So, obviously, we want to win the game. So, the strategy that we have in mind um, would be about trying to win the game. Coach, is, is there any advantage, disadvantage in the fact that Trent Tobago would have played against Jamaica in Jamaica and returned undefeated, including, including winning by one goal to nil? Ah, no, really. Um, the Jamaica team, albeit the, they had about nine foreign-based players uh, in that match, I think it's only about five of them in, in this particular match. So, you know, the likes of Mikel Antonio and, and Jamari Gray, he just came in and... Um, Bobby Reed and all the likes of these guys, you know, Pinock and them, they wouldn't have been in that squad at that time. And uh, to our credit, we we had a locally based team also. So we didn't have the guys that uh, we had also. And this one, Kappa, you know, for both of you, um, you know, how important were you kind of, you mentioned it um, earlier, but you know, how important were for both of you or for the other team, the country to be able to qualify out of the group stage, you know, for the first time since 2015? This would be huge um, because we have been, there's no secret, uh, the problems that we had in our football being normalized and by FIFA normalization committees and all that kind of stuff. So we are now getting our football back on track. I, I would say we just had a league after about three years without one. That that was a big success. Um, there's players in the squad came out of that uh, that league, and um, we continue to build. You know, we we have qualified for two back to back uh, gold cups now proper. So I think uh, we are back on the right track. So this is a is another step in that direction. Um, the end game here is to qualify for World Cup 2006. Is in our region. Um, and we want to put our best foot forward to try to be there again. Yeah, I think it would be a very positive result. And this would help to continue uplifting football in Trinidad and Tobago. As we know, the past couple of years have not been very easy. Coach, the last couple of years, as Kylie, Kylie said, um, has not been really productive for Trinidad and Tobago. What have you done recently at Make Trinidad to in the corner in football? I think we have been um, successful um, in a very short space of time to revamp the team and freshen up the team. Um, and, and the young players are really coming through. And um, because it, it was an issue that we had, um, we, the, the team was getting old and it was getting stale. And we really refresh the team, and you see these younger kids coming through. Johnny Fortune, Kelly Overy, is his name, by the way. Um, Muli Khan, you know, all of these boys, they're playing in the MLS as, as young 19 and 18 year olds. So um, just freshening up the team and, and having a new perspective and a new drive 
I think was one of the major parts of us, um, our development uh, on a turn in the corner. Kelly, as a, as a young player, your seven match for Trent Tobago, your second Gold Cup match, what does it mean being part of the young brigade? As Angus mentioned, so many young players on the team, Real Gill, Young Fortune, just to mention a few names. How does it, how does it, what does it mean to you the young guys? Well, first, it means a lot. And it's truly a privilege to be here at such a young age and to be able to learn from certain veterans like Kevin Molino, Joven Jones, to be able to acquire that experience at a young age. And what has been the biggest challenge for a, a youthful player like yourself coming into a team for the Gold Cup? I think the biggest challenge is to adapt very quickly to certain demands. As in, in a game, there's different types of situations. Sometimes the team's doing well, not as well, and to be able to adjust. But as I said, um, I have my teammates that help communicate with me and understand certain things to adapt quickly. Okay, um, there's no question in the virtual conference, so that's the, the finish for the press conference. Thank you so much for the time, and good luck tomorrow in the, in the game. Thank you.